submit. <laughs> Let's assume. Uh, right. So I submit. So I will do the uh, log factorization here. Um, maybe. Uh, and in fact, what I say is going to work uh, independently of what the dimension and model of uh, small modification. So the main model of today is to put the power here. So we can assume that D, that one, and minus. And says uh, the following. So suppose that the term of the norm, omega norm, is uh, supported. But this is not needed, but I want to use this to make my life easier. So not And uh, the mix also assumes that the color norm of some of the norm is finite. So these are <coughs> my assumptions on the on the initial data. Then Two, two statements which are kind of complementary to each other. So assume that for any time t, um, I can find another one that's just this integral is uh, on the constant. Okay. For any D, I find the bound M, but uh, the part of the history is in the following steps. So they are C1, 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 And I'm going to find the following way. So x is the subalpha base. That's now <coughs> alpha of the determinant of the gradient. What is this and what is this? So I let me know the gradient and the gamma on sigma semi-on of the gradient. So, 
If I want to apply some regard theorem, then I need an open space. And if I were to fit um, some constraint like this, then it would be in some hypersurface and the core group uh, would be much further. And so this is the reason why I want to work in an open set. So in the case of OM, we can take OM So, pretty much, okay, I, it's a long statement, but essentially what I'm saying here in an informal way is that if I can control this norm, then I have global existence. So, <clears throat> This is part one of, of the statement of the theorem. And part two is kind of the components. So if something goes wrong in terms of this quantity, then I'm going to start finding my problem. So if for any M I can find the finite maximal time. Space, zero, value zero m, and the limit that m goes to infinity of this <coughs> maximum time, some final number, then um, there will be something going to go to the integral. So then the limit. As D goes to B star, which is this <laughs> limit of the, maximum, of the maximal times of the integral from zero to D. Oh my God. Yes. in all directions, like something below the Yeah, so if you look at the product of the eigenvalues, then you may have one which is quite big. But it's not functional, it's common, no? Right. So this means that it's greater than the other condition of that. Yes. But but you could have one which is I mean ah yeah, yeah. In terms of M, yes, but then is T for the ball. I mean, it's M is fixed, but it could be very big. So there is some uniform uh, control. Okay, that's from upper, second upper one. Yes. Okay, so informally, if I were to uh, state two. Uh, in a more compact way, then if the vorticity goes up, if and only if uh, fine time block. So, this is kind of a Take away sentence so that if we can control this object here, or if we can't control it, then we're going to have a global sentence of time. Okay. So this is this is a theorem 
that we are going to do next. And we'll also see why we're working in a kind of way. So, yeah, so very brief, kind of a very brief intuition or, or kind of a why this is popping up. So, the main intuition. Oh, so, if you remember, ah, and of course, as a corollary, I mean, it's independent of whether we are in dimension two or in dimension three, but since, since we saw the other way, Vorticity is important in dimension two, so then this integral is automatically finite. Therefore, we uh, have a corollary of this theorem, the rest of three, and the, the global existence in two D. I mean, for three, when three on three, but uh, at least at the end of the day, we get it. So the intuition to follow um, so morally, if we were to do energy estimates, and we were to track uh, the evolution of, say, a uh, so norm of omega, then we see some laws controlled by graph B in an infinity, the same norm, uh, whatever that means. I mean, here, in like, uh, for example, uh, the HK over the Okay, so ideally, if we start this thing under control, then then we win. Okay, so lower resistance is with a control. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't want to assume this, and I don't want to, to work with this. So instead, I'm going to try to define, and I'm going to try to control omega instead. Okay, so you can see, and this is easy, that if I have control of the gradient. In infinity, then this is me for free control of home. Just because of the definition of uh, here I control everything on the derivatives, and this is just a bunch of derivatives put together. However, this is not so evident. And uh, okay, so let's see. To a simple explanation why it is not so clear that if you control the vorticity, you can control the gradient of the velocity. So, if we take the difference of the relation between um, two and omega, we have, for example, the following. So, delta u j is gi omega. As J, where omega and J is on DI and J and DJ. Right here, it's on the night. I mean, one time we cover this, this is right? because when it hits here, this is the term that survives, and when it hits here, when it hits here this goes away because of the term. So now, what do I have? Well, dk, uj, so I'm trying to do that. dk, uj, is the plus minus one, di, dk, omega, uj. Okay, now, <coughs> This is the thing that I want to control, um, and this is the thing that I that I know. So these are the components, for example, in dimension three, 
this would be the, the components of the of the vector value of this would be. Now to write something like this. So if you were to, to control uh, omega and you wanted to control um, dkdj, then this operator better be bounded in an infinity. Yes, but it's not one. Okay, so that's that's exactly what happened. So if there's only one DR and K is bounded. As you said, this is a big transform. Uh, then we Um, but uh, the problem uh, oh, yeah, so, so this is kind of a problem and this is this is putting uh, a technical difficulty on why this control is uh, is not good. It's not bounded in infinity. So with with the fixes. Uh, this, for example, works in other spaces. <clears throat> so, I'm going to work, I'm going to do the proof for, uh, for CR. And this is the reason why, in my space, this is already involving, okay, I erased it, but uh, this is already involving uh, some stuff. Okay, so that's kind of the the picture as to why we are choosing that space and uh, why we can just do <coughs> things straight away from from L infinity from L infinity no, from L infinity based spaces and we need to do something more clever okay because there are these singular integrals that are going to pop up and uh, we are going to start to, to, to okay so <coughs> <laughs> okay, what's the story? So, the story is the following. I'm going to do the proof in Lagrangian. I'm going to do a similar proof using energy estimates and similar integral estimates in Eulerian, but I'm going to discuss the proof in Lagrangian. Okay, so, I work with the particle trajectory equation. Is equal to the integral of the kernel given by the theos of our law. I mean, we need to put it to the and of course, of the zero. Then this a unique solution and C one of zero logarithm okay, or something even F. So let's take this as a fact. I will cheat a little bit and I won't prove this. Um, but let's assume <coughs> that there are no issues with, uh, with the local existence. Okay, so otherwise I won't be able to give you the proof of, <coughs> of this theorem today. But maybe this can be recovered later or done later in later lectures when we'll be talking about other stuff. So, 
Okay, so let's assume for now that we have an update that we have for the local existence. And uh, I'm going to use the founding lemma. This is an only lemma uh, from Ladas and Flax uh, in Tan. And this is the That says the following. So I got an open um, success of a one space. And uh, I have a function of O into B, uh, local elite sheets. Then the unique solution of uh, unique solution X, B, C1, D. O of the following autonomous OE then this <coughs> either exists for all time. Or um, T is finite, this T where the solution is defined, and uh, X of T leaves the open set O as T goes to T. Okay, so either we have to go or we leave the space. Okay. So let's see what implications does that figure and part in, in our case. So in our case, remember that okay, I don't really place it, but if uh, if you look at from the space what we find from the open set what we find, there were two conditions. Either the um, the determinant of the Jacobian was uh, bigger than uh, one half, or <coughs> the, the C1 gamma dot um, was bigger than it. Okay, so in our case, <coughs> this volume is big. This volume is something we are not going to have any problems with the condition on the Jacobian. Okay, that's going to be under control for all time. Therefore, the only possibility for X in the space um, is in the same. The same one that I know has to be bigger than. Okay, so now this prompts us to just uh, control it. Yes. The condition that we have to swim on the house or here is only technical because we could come for the one and then work in a manifold, and there must be some third similar to this one for us to manifold the. Yes. Yes. Now that's, that's true, but I don't want to get into this uh, manifold language and we have to do. Everything in yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely right. Yeah, we could restrict everything to the to the production manifold and, and work there, but then I don't know if that's that's yeah, 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 uh, yes, yeah. um. Okay. I don't think it's necessary, but uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um. 
Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, so it is not. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I'm putting additional hypothesis trying to simplify this position. So, maybe for example, like the pop up support, there are many things that are like artificial, but uh, I don't want to have any sophisticated proofs. So, uh, Okay, so <coughs> the position one is that I can control this norm by the integral of the limit of the velocity. So we are we're not reading where we want to be. Because we would like this to be the vorticity, but at least um, kind of similar to what I what I wrote on before as, as an energy. Okay, so let's try to control the norm of the of the trajectories in terms of the uh, velocity. Okay. So <clears throat> well the uh, And the equation for the equation and we can see what we did and we can run this one in the dark. Yeah, now I can make one derivative analysis here. So the derivative in time of the gradient is simply given by the gradient of B. So, so far, so good. Now, as you can see, again, like this quantity gradient of V popping up. So now the point as I as I announced before is that if we were to work on on a further space then <laughs> one can control this. So lemma one which I will prove later is the following. So I can control a3 of f infinity, and uh, this is <coughs> this is my v. Um, so this this is what I what I mean by k3 k3 f. So k3 the convolution between k3 and some f. In this case, there is the role of omega naught grad uh, grad x. This I can control it by some uh, r times the L infinity norm of f. So here I'm assuming that F is gamma, let's say from R3 and to R3, compactly supported, and I'm calling MF the measure of the support, and uh, R3, uh, R cube equal to, <coughs> to the measure. Okay, so this um, I owe you. Um, but I will I will put the proof later. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to use that estimate to get bounds on the trajectory and uh, in terms of for now, now. Constant times R, which now depends on time, uh, times the infinity norm. The 
the phenomenon is what, uh, what's, uh, what's okay. Now, I'm going to use the V in volume seven. Therefore, <clears throat> this R is constant, it doesn't depend on time. So R is equal to R two. And therefore, I command and I combine the trajectory, for example, of zero. I combine x of uh, so now also uh, the remaining term is the sigma manon of uh, of this object. So now that again can be control. And the ground one by a very exciting zero, which is a number signed up to the T, number B. So we have control <clears throat> the two easy pieces of X, and uh, we need to control the, the gamma semi. Okay, so it's that's the final part, and that's where we are going to spend most of the time. So now on the bottom. Gamma semi norm of the system. If you then we could control the full sigma gamma norm. So, so now let's look at the evolution of this one. Okay, so, if you look. And the substitute that I just stated, but there was a grad B and a, and a nava. And another x. So if I take the the c gamma seminon, then I can bound it by doing n infinity c gamma and uh, c gamma okay. So I can I can uh, uh, give gamma derivative of one and then check. Okay. So I can bound this just as uh, simply that b okay. infinity. Um, infinity plus the other way. Infinity. Okay, I'm not going to do anything at this point. And now let's see if we can if we can find some kind of differential inequality. So we can bound the uh, bound that, that Okay, so first of all, I'm going to use a bound for uh, the Felder seminon <coughs> whenever there is a composition. And I'm going to use the bound that F composed with X is bounded by F and gamma, lambda X. Okay, this is, this is not very difficult to do. You write down the color seminar 
of, uh, of the composition, and then you multiply uh, the numerator and the denominator by the appropriate uh, difference of, uh, of x, and then that's how the graph alpha pops up. Okay, so using this, then I substitute and uh, we get this step. So now we have this. Now x. Um, good. Now <clears throat> I want to I want to use potential theory to bound uh, this term in terms of omega. So this is bounded by some constant omega gamma. And I will do it. It's just at the end. I want to go all the way to the end, uh, maybe skipping some details and then I'll come back and I'll do the remaining thing. Okay, so <clears throat> we can bound grand, uh, grand B by some constant time <coughs> somewhere. So this is. Uh, I'm using one guy and uh, this one and uh, I still have one. Okay, but it looks like we are <coughs> making progress. So now we have things in terms of all, all these numbers. Are so we have something bounded <coughs> in terms of the infinity norm of uh, Nabla B, and then we have some sort of flavor of, uh, of a gram one in one. So this is good because I'm going to get, whenever I do <coughs> gram one, I'm going to get the integral of. Uh, of the infinity norm of the gradient integrated in time. <laughs> and the other term is also good, more or less, uh, if it were for the. Uh, okay, so now this is the term that I want to build. And I would like to write this term as a function of the initial data and the integral of, uh, of Nabla. Okay, so that's. That's the plan. And uh, okay, so that's lemma two, which again I owe you, and it will do later. Um, so lemma two says that I can bound the vorticity in C gamma by the initial vorticity in C gamma, then times an exponential of some constant, the integral of nabla b. So, for half an hour, that, uh, that this is true. Now I'm going to use this substitute here and close. Okay. So now if I use the lemma. Then I substitute that. It goes away. So, the derivative in time of the C gamma similar of x um, can be written, can be bounded by C. And I substitute there using this uh, the gamma norm of omega naught e to some number integral from C to t, now la v, yes. So this is the first. Uh, plus uh, nabla b at infinity, nabla x. Uh, okay. Now, <clears throat> this looks a lot groundwork because, uh, I mean, this is effectively a constant and uh, this is some forcing term. 
Now, if we use uh, if we use one one or if we just integrate and use one one. Then what do we have? So if we have the number of uh, is bounded by some constant uh, integral from zero to p, p p one integral zero to s, our b tau b tau yes.
Okay, so <clears throat> first observe that from the Joshua law, um, if I take the gradient on B, then I can write it as some <clears throat> integral with some term at the end. And uh, here, Pn is the graph of Pn. And this can be bounded by the following quantity. Number B, in the infinity, can be bounded by some constants, omega, uh, the, the gamma norm of omega, epsilon to the gamma, plus omega. In infinity, one plus of uh, over epsilon, rolex, and uh, R is this. And to the end, again, is the measure of the support of optimus. Okay, so <clears throat> this is. Um, one estimate that for now I will skip, but later I will <laughs> come back. Okay, I just want to do to give the whole picture and then later I will focus on the details. Okay, so for now let's believe <clears throat> that's what we're going to make. Uh, and I will explain in a minute why. Okay, so if we believe that, then this works for any epsilon. Let's take epsilon <coughs> to be for every p, we see gamma norm of omega to the minus one over gamma for each t. So for each t, <coughs> I pick my favorite epsilon. I pick my favorite epsilon and I want to get a nice rest by choosing the epsilon <coughs> appropriate. So if I do that, then the energy of the gradient can be bounded by some constant L infinity norm of omega and then the log. Okay. And now I use the lemma that I didn't do. Which accounted for this um, for this growth. So now I'm going to use again the lemma that I didn't prove yet, bounding <coughs> omega as a function <coughs> of uh, the initial data times some exponential involving number of If I use this substitute here, then what I get is the following bound for lambda b. I'm going to get some constant that depends on omega naught times the L infinity norm of uh, omega times one plus the integral in time of lambda b. This is just by substituting into into the into the bound and cancelling the log with the with the exponential and the rest absorbing it into. Okay, so if I do that, if I do this, then okay, this is kind of a hidden gradual inequality as well because we we have some quantity and we are relating it via differential inequality with its time derivative. So now my gradual. Yes. But uh So my normal 
then uh, one plus the integral bounded by p constant integral. So <clears throat> essentially, uh, we are done because now we can control this quantity by this one. And uh, this sort of thing is the proof. Modulo everything that I said that I will prove and didn't prove. Okay, so this, this thing is. So let's go back to the higher groups. And now I will prove. Okay. So let's prove says that uh we have to show that the formula uh, in Sigama is bounded by omega naught in Sigama C is a constant integral okay. so this is something that I said was true but <clears throat> Uh, so, the first thing that I'm going to do is that uh, omega of lambda b is bounded by lambda b in an infinity omega in C down. Okay, and I don't, I don't need the other term. So, if I were to distribute the derivatives, I will have an extra term. But my claim is that that extra term can be absorbed by the main <coughs> the main term at the top. So that's claim one. And uh, let's see. Okay. So as I said, we is if I distribute the derivative. So I did. This is gamma and omega, gamma v and infinity, this is the one that I want to keep, plus omega and infinity, gamma v, sigma. Okay, so, <clears throat> so far I really can't have anything. And now I'm going to use something that I will prove later, but it was part of another IOU, namely that the three potential theory. Um, I can control lambda v by some constant omega in, in, in sigma. Yes. Yeah. That's that's the
And now I'm going to write the transport equation for omega in the following way. Equation and now here I'm I'm in three for omega as uh, the function. So omega I'm going to go back and forth between the and the right. So uh, omega of x t is equal to omega naught of x inverse of x t. Um, plus the integral in time <coughs> omega plus b of x inverse of x minus and uh, x inverse the inverse of the particle trajectory map. Uh, in LA. Yeah, so I have an idea of you and another idea of you. This one is this. So this, this has a limit. Not, uh, not a circular line. So now let's use that calculation to control. Um, we improve on this estimate and uh, get that. So now <clears throat> let's estimate the standard terminal of the phone. So I'm going to basically estimate. Omega of x and omega of x. Um, then you can divide by x minus x prime to the right now. So now I use that formulation and I found this by omega naught of x fingers and omega naught of x fingers of x plus the integral. Now, uh, first time it's easy because I can simply use a third bound on, on omega naught and then still we can integral that. So this can be bounded by the third terminal of uh, omega naught number x inverse the infinity uh, to the gamma x. Again, I'm using the same sort of estimation I used before, uh, bounding the, the C gamma seminon of the of the composition by by the, by losing this part. Okay. Um, plus, okay.
And again, it is the same. Okay. So I'm composing omega of that B with a uh, x in And now this is bounded, I keep, I keep going, and I use now the bound on uh, on the energy in the norm of now x. Now I think. And here I can get this bound on number x because I'm using that the evolution of the inverse. This cancels out. This gives me also some nice <coughs> cancellation and puts it as an integral from the west. So this is bounded by omega naught t gamma plus some <coughs> constant in the plus t of t u of s uh, omega of s to the gamma t gamma integral t of west. U of S prime, U of S prime, yes. And uh, now I will call this quantity here V of T. Then what is the differential inequality that I have for G? Well, G of T. Bounded by omega naught plus some constant uh, q of s g of s. And now I can apply ground work. So g of t bounded by omega naught gamma e 
and constant integral from 0 to t, q of s, dx. And therefore, now I am doing everything, multiply by, by the exponential, uh, omega c gamma is bounded by omega naught c gamma e to the c naught plus gamma integral you know, t q, uh, well, q now is substituted by what is q, now blah b of s this. Okay, so this is the lemma that, uh, that I owe you, and uh, okay, now let's move on to the harmonic analysis part that was missing. Okay, so for example. This, uh, these bounds relating, <coughs> for example, the sigma gamma norms of V or of, uh, or of omega, uh, of that V or of omega. Okay, so <coughs> another thing that, uh, that I also told you was the following. So I want to bound now K and F. Okay, remember we were, <coughs> we were trying to bound KCF in an infinity by F in an infinity, modulo a constant and a spot. So, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to split the integral between the near part and the far part. So I'm going to write this KN x minus y, f of y plus again the same thing. But here I'm going to be integrating over the near part and here <coughs> over the part. And now, if I if I take L infinity norms for the first part, I put F in L infinity, and I use um, I use the L infinity bound on on K n. So I can bound it by some constant. F in infinity the integral of a small ball uh, one of x prime to the n minus one with that. Okay, and you see here just the the, the bigger bound on okay. And for the other part, I do the one and infinity. So again, I put f in an infinity. I use that I am in the far region so that this is a point where it's bound, and I'm only integrating at most over the full support. So that gives me an MF popping uh, up on, on the image. Now, if I do L infinity, but with uh, the, the constraint on the side of the support, this gives me MF and R to the minus N plus one. And now I use. The fact, I mean, I can't do this integral. I use the fact that mf is r to the n, so it cancels with this minus n, and then both terms uh, can be combined with the constant r. Uh, okay. okay, so <clears throat> this was the first potential theory now that, uh, that they wrote. Now let's go on to. Next. This is probably lemma three, I guess, in the order of the problem. Now let the end now at the end. We also know that the integral of Pn is zero over uh, over the spheres, uh, and we also know that Pn is over the so. Okay, so <clears throat> this these properties are very easy to check, and again I'm going to speak. Near and far, 
So CM, I'm going to write it as the integral of the x minus y minus the next one, plus x minus y equal to the next one, CM, x minus y. And I'm going to go this one by one and this one by two. Now let's count. <coughs> I want to make two, and I'm going to use the fact that Pn integrates to zero over over the slice. Okay, so <clears throat> let's try to bound on I1. So I1 is the take variables, I have conveniently. It's equal to keep in mind that this, this term is equal to zero because the integral uh, of, of P one is Now we're going to use um, the depth expander to gain a little bit of y and put it into, into P. Okay, so that's that's the trick. Again, the function this is what being coded is important because it gives me a little bit of room to compensate for the singularity. Okay, so then I want some bounded by PN one y to the gamma bound constant S seminon uh, integral of one one ten plus gamma over four four uh, and it integrates uh, some constant times <coughs> C F gamma. So this is the first time coming in in the estimates of uh, of DNA. Now let's move on to I two. So what I do, I'm going to do the following. So again, I do is a far piece. So now I'm going to split it yet one more time between <coughs> epsilon uh, and r and uh, beyond r. So I'm going to split. Into these two regions. And I'm going to use more or less um, what we did before. Now, <clears throat> this is singular, but it's not singular because we are away from the singularity. So it's not going to blow up. Instead, it's going to give me a law. So if I were to take epsilon to go all the way to zero, then this is problematic because of the singularity of the kernel. But uh, but since we are away, then this is fine. And this one we estimated in the same way as so now this can be bounded by some other constant r to the minus n f to infinity. MF, MF, R to the minus M cancel out. And we found that, and then I put together what is left, log of R over epsilon plus one. Okay, so this is the estimate that, uh, that we wanted to do on uh, another one. Okay, now to the final estimate, this is the sigma minus M. Now we are the infinity level. Now let's do the standard seminar, which is a little bit bigger, but it has the same play. So this is the last estimate. Uh, and now 
we want to remember this is what we want to this is what we want to run. So we have in sigma bounded by f yes, in sigma. Okay, so this is this is what we what we want to do. And uh, the idea is to add and subtract conveniently using this translation and in a similar framework as here, but with a little bit more care, instead of doing that for the HPD for the divided data. So we're going to construct the enumerator of PNF uh, in, in the further section and then use similar tricks as, as for this case. Okay, it's a little bit more involved because there are two terms, it's supposed to one, but uh, so it's the same, <coughs> same principle. So I'm interested in writing PNF of X minus PNF of X plus H. And I'm going to split it into <coughs> four terms. So the first one is whenever uh, I'm close to zero, PNF. Finishes 
everything is finished so that I will use and uh, this will finish the whole group. So let's let's try to prove this estimate and then we we finish. Um, good. So <clears throat> to prove this, I'm going to use the mean value theory. So <clears throat> the first time is why is uh is fast is fast then x minus one plus h uh is a this stage okay and now <clears throat> I can bound I'm trying to bound this difference using the mean value theory so pn Minus y minus n of x plus h minus y is bounded by the <coughs> supremum c. Um, of the gradient of here. and <coughs> h. Uh, and now I claim that this is bounded. By this quantity here, and I guess. I mean, this automatically implies this, which is uh, what we what we want to prove. So let's prove that bound on the gradient. So <clears throat> this is true because of the following. So I can bound x minus y. By uh, x minus y minus h, and then I can bound this uniformly for all c's, and again I can bound things like this and still squeeze it between <coughs> x minus y modulo. Okay, and I also have the point wise bound now that the n uh, bounded by some constant x. To the minus n minus one. Then, in particular, this implies that PNF of x minus PNF of x plus h is bounded by C times F gamma h to the gamma. Following the slides, I mean, everything else is under control. It follows from this estimate and uh, and we are done. And this automatically also implies what we wanted to prove, namely that PNF C gamma is bounded by some constant F uh, C. Okay, so this is the proof of all the potential theory estimates. And uh, yeah, okay. remember no class on my Okay, so uh, for me. That's my point. Anyone on the chat? No? If not, uh, we'll see each other in, in a week. Okay? Bye.